Let's go through a few, of, a few of these things. The first thing to, to, to get my attention this morning was, the, was what you're saying around the pension deficit. Updates on what you're doing there, how sustainable the pension deficit is proving to be then for BT right now. Well, good morning, Anna. Um, we've been announcing quite a lot this morning, so it might yes. be worth just framing it for, sure. for viewers. I mean, first of all, the results. The results are in line with expectation, in line with guidance, um, slightly lower because of choices we've made on revenue, in line on profits, ahead on cash. Then the, uh, the pension, as you mentioned, um, we are announcing that we've um, come to agreement with the trustees around the triannual valuation. Um, the, the most important takeaway, uh, well, there's two important takeaways from it. One is, as we previously announced, it's now shut for future accruals. So we've got certainty going forwards. And then secondly, the cash contribution that we're making over the next three years is in line with the previous plan. So in spite of the deficit going up, we're not putting more cash in in the short term. So that's good news as well. And the third thing which you touched on is the next stage of our transformation plan we're announcing this morning, um, which is uh, a significant uh, implementation over the next three years. It should generate around 1.5 billion in, in benefits um, through headcount savings, simplifying our, uh, our estate in terms of our office estate, um, but also importantly investing in new technologies like 5G and and FTTP, so you'll see our capex go up at the same time. Mm. Mm. On the uh, fibre, that's something that's keen uh, that investors are keen to hear more on. You've had pressure from the regulator uh, to sort of build uh, this, and there are some fibre building rivals as well that uh, you know some institutional money has put quite a lot of money behind. Can you rule out another fibre build acceleration in the face of pressure from rivals and pressure from regulators? Well, today we're reaffirming our plans uh, around fibre, which we set out a couple of months ago. Um, we've set an ambition to uh, achieve 10 million premises passed by the mid-2020s. And we're getting on and building it today, so we've, we will be at 3 million by 2020. And so many other people are talking about it. We're getting on and building it, and uh, we've passed over half a million uh, as of today, and we'll be at 3 million by 2020. And is Sharon White done then, the head of the regulator Ofcom? She's done in terms of uh, demanding that you do more? Well, I, I can't speak for Sharon. All I know is that uh, we're making uh, good progress on the plan we've committed to. Um, it's it started very well. Uh, we've uh, launched in eight cities across the UK. We were announced that we're coming to 40 in total, um, and we'll get on and build it. Gavin, you're cutting 13,000 rolls, announcing £1.5 billion of a cash cost reduction. Are you done with the cost cutting after this or is there more to come? Well, we're, we're always looking to find new ways to make the business more efficient. And we have to do that because technology advances mean uh, and, and competition and regulation mean uh, we must always make sure we're finding the most efficient way of delivering uh, the network and, uh, and creating value for customers. Um, but this plan itself is a very ambitious one, I think. It's probably the most significant we've had uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, as you say, we'll be um, reducing the number of roles, mainly in managerial and back office, by 13,000 over the next three years. But as importantly, we'll be investing 6,000 new jobs in service and, and um, the deployment of networks, people, engineers to build the networks that we've been talking about, and also things like our security practice, which is growing very quickly. So if you're cutting these 13,000, but you're building up in engineering, you're going to need some engineers, Gavin. How uh, easy or difficult is it proving to find those with Brexit uh, looming? Uh, you make a good point, Anna. And this is, is probably one of the most significant uh, key success factors, if you like, in terms of who's going to win in the, in the, uh, the race to build fibre networks. Uh, it's not really about the access to, to, to capital. I think it is about uh, expertise and uh, experience and ability to, to get the, uh, the engineers in place. Um, so we are, uh, and we've announced that we've, we're hiring 3,500 new engineers. Um, we did that a couple of months ago. We're building 12 fibre academies across the country. Um, and I think the fact that we've had so much experience of, of building these networks to date gives us a... Uh, a faster start, let me put it that way. And, and in terms of that, that, that story around staffing the engineering, you know, is the government listening to, your, to what you want in terms of access to engineers from the rest of Europe? And, and also, do you anticipate wage rises then, if it's proving difficult for, or if it's proving competitive to get hold of the, these engineers? Well, um, I think the government are listening. They understand that to build these fibre networks, um, they, can, they can play a role. Um, they can promote good investment. Uh, so that shareholders can see a decent return. Um, 
they can ensure that we can get access to street works in the right way um, and they can help in terms of, uh, in terms of the labour markets. Um, it will be dif more difficult with Brexit. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't, can't say that any other way, uh, but ultimately we're going to be hiring more of our own, um, our own direct labour mm. uh, and that's what we're getting on and doing today. What can you tell investors about the sustainability of the dividend? Well, I think what we're calling out today um, with our dividend is, um, is a really confident statement. Um, we've decided to, to uh, leave it unchanged for 1718, but we're also signalling to the market that we think it'll be unchanged for the next two years. Uh, and, and that's a confident statement because at the same time, we're increasing capex. Um, we've announced this big transformation plan, but some of that, certainly in the short term, uh, will be offset against uh, higher regulatory pressures, particularly on, on regulatory pricing. But we can see through that, uh, and in a couple of years, probably from 20, 21, 2021 onwards, mm. we can see uh, EBITDA grow again. How's the, uh, how's the integration of the, the mobile brand EE going for the business, Gavin? How are you uh, guaranteeing that you make the most, I guess, out of that purchase when you bring together the mobile and the fixed side of your business on the consumer side? Well, it's gone really well. So EE's performance has, has picked up since we uh, acquired the business a couple of years ago. So it's now in its sixth consecutive quarter uh, of revenue growth. Um, it's the leader in terms of uh, postpaid net ads growth. Um, we've got the best network in the UK, according to Root Metrics. We've got the highest coverage, the highest speeds. Um, but importantly, in today's announcement, we're talking about the next stage of development, which is all around convergence. It is the, mm. it is the convergence of fixed networks with wireless networks to create seamless um, services for customers um, that allow you to move between the two without, uh, uh, without really noticing. And, and that's, that's key to the next generation of products and services. I Can think. you give us more detail then on your strategy around convergence to deliver that top line growth? Well, I, 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 I outline it today. Um, it is about products that make the best of our fixed and wireless capability um, so that customers can move between the two networks seamlessly. They can share allowances between uh, family members, for example, um, or they can switch their capabilities and redirect um, their services from fixed to wireless uh, wherever they are. So it's, it's all about combining the networks and adding services and software on top that allow you to configure it yeah. um, yourself. But there's a lot of competition for content at the moment, Gavin, it seems, and uh, we see you know, the battle for, for Sky, uh, just being, uh, Sky being one of those. Um, uh, and we see it elsewhere with Comcast and Fox and uh, Disney and the like, all, all talking to each other about content. Um, you managed to pay a little bit less than some people thought for the English Premier League, I think, in this financial uh, year. What, what, update us on your intentions when it comes to content. Well, we've... Um... We're very happy with BT Sport. It's performing well. Audiences um, are up significantly this quarter um, behind the Champions League and, and cricket. Uh, and as you say, Anna, we've secured another three years of, of Premier League football um, that really gives us good visibility on our, our content portfolio going forwards. Um, and gradually we have moved it from a free proposition to a paid proposition, so it is more sustainable um, on an ongoing basis. So that's worked extremely well. Um, we've also tied, um, agreed a long-term relationship with Sky uh, to be able to allow our customers to access their channels, again improving the overall uh, suite of content for our customers. Uh, and we're very happy with uh, the outcome of that. We've talked a lot about growth areas. What about divestments? Well, um, you wouldn't expect me to be uh, signalling <laughs> live on TV exactly what we're going to do on divestment. What I will All say right, what's is... What's the future for global services, specifically sure. BT Italy? What, what, what I will say is um, Global Services is in a, a period of um, transformation itself. Um, over the last 12 months, we've put more focus on digital network services, um, and that means you're not as dependent as owning, uh, as owning local access networks as, as probably you were 10 years ago. Uh, so that transformation is going very well. Um, we're through the first year of a two-year transformation program, um, and over the next year, you will see us begin to dispose of some of the non-core uh, network assets uh, and uh, expect to see progress over the next 12 months.